Und Action. Hey guys and welcome back. In the last episode I gave you a tiny little teaser at the end about our new workshop. Now that it's sort of 90%, 85-90% done, let me give you a 60 second tour. Over here is our workbench with our power tools, drill, drill press and the like. All our tools are going to go up on this wall. Obviously there's not that many tools yet but we left some room over here. Uh, that's all to come in the future. Protect your eyes, protect your ears, and uh, some small storage over here for like bits and bobs and stuff. Over here we mounted the bench seats that were in the trunk of our G-Class. We're not going to put those back in, so we're mounting them here on the wall, sort of as a brake bench. And then all the way in the back, I bought this old high school locker. So that's our changing area where you can keep your good clothes clean. Then back here is our giant shelf for the big parts in the very back. Here are all our beautifully uh, painted hood, doors, all the big items. Over here, room for small items. Keep it all nice and organized. None of these have any parts yet, but they're gonna be there in the future. Down here is all the interior of our car. Carpets, lights, dashboard, this sort of thing. Then here obviously is the frame. Keep some tools here, keep some fluids. That's all exterior trim and bumper. This is all engine, drivetrain, more parts, and then sort of bigger items down there, uh, chassis parts. Um, over here are axles. Those are gonna be assembled first, so they're right in the middle here. We put the engine we picked up yesterday over in the very corner here. This beautiful piece we inherited from our grandpa. He must have built it in the 1950s. And it is a little small, so we're going to probably incorporate that into a bigger workbench of some sort that we're going to build in the future. But, you know, it's right here for the moment. And then this is our beautiful welder, Mi'kmaq welder, water-cooled, nice machine. Same year as our car, 1988. We bought that for Lasse's birthday. And uh, we're excited to use it. We haven't tried it yet. I know it works, but we haven't actually used it yet. And then we built this kind of divider around here so that when we are welding, other guys working in other parts of the warehouse here don't have to be careful about the arc and, and getting welder's eye and that sort of thing. You remember the episode where I went to the hospital, maybe? And uh, yeah, that's sort of it. Uh, that's our space. So um, let's launch into today's project. All right, today's project is gonna be reassembling the axles. We have the housings back from powder coating and so they're ready to go. And now we have the internals, uh, shafts, uh, the bearings, gears, um, and the axles. So we have to clean those up and then put some new grease on them, put it back together, easy peasy. Yeah, let's try to figure it out.
Vorderachs. Irgendwas. Boah. Now as you can see and might have guessed our brilliant idea of keeping bits, bobs and bolts in freezer bags turned out to be a total disaster. Not only can you not read anymore what was written in most of these bags, but also what is inside the bags now usually is rustier and dirtier than it was before. So I spent many days this month cleaning up nuts and bolts and trying to decipher the hieroglyphics left on the bag and then resorting them into these blue plastic containers that we now have. Meanwhile, Lasse is installing a new bearing for the input shaft for our rear diff. And as you can see, he's struggling a little bit because it really is a job for a hydraulic press, which we don't have. And trying to get these bearings to go in straight with just a hammer turned out to be a bit of a challenge. So we were just about to assemble the internals of our rear axle right here and we thought we'd stop for a second and take a look at how our hydraulically actuated differential lock works because it's kind of cool. So as you decide to lock your diff, there's a pullout switch in the cab in the center console and you pull it out, that applies pressure to a hydraulic line and that hydraulic line leads all the way back to the rear axle to this actuator, comes in the right back right here and the hydraulic pressure presses this pin over here. This actuator is mounted on our axle housing right here and this pin protrudes into the axle housing. Now inside that axle housing that's where our axle sits and our axle is, a, is two part as you can see uh, this being the driver's side and over here is our passenger side and you will be quick to notice that they're slightly different. The passenger side has one set of gears and the driver's side has two sets of gears and the inside ones they write in here inside in this differential there's a matching set of teeth that they sit in. Now as our differential is not locked we do have four-wheel drive but we are with open diff this can rotate inside the diff and so can the other side so they both can turn at different speeds. Now what happens when the pin inside this actuator moves. The pin inside this actuator sits in this little hole in this shoe that rides freely on our axle and it has a locking gear at the end. Now as the pin presses this shoe toward the differential, the teeth on this locking gear hook with a matching set of teeth on the actual differential. And now I am no longer able to turn this axle. It is locked in place and can only spin at the same speed with the other side. So we have just locked our differential. Nö, nee, ich glaube nicht. Haben wir jetzt auch alles beachtet? Here you can see Lasse starting to take apart the wheel bearing assembly on our rear axle. Now this wheel bearing may look good at first sight, but as you'll see under the jolt of a hammer, there's quite a bit of play in the wheel bearing. 
and we already figured that it must be worn out so we got a new set that we were gonna uh, try to install here. Now removing the old bearing, uh, that was kind of straightforward. Um, this wheel bearing work is uh, usually the kind of work you want a hydraulic press for, which we don't have. So our plan B was to remove the old bearing simply by cutting it in half with a angle grinder. Now obviously that uh, requires some skill as you don't want to cut into the axle itself, but Lasta managed to do that with the precision of a surgeon finally uh, removing it, breaking the, breaking the remaining links with sheer force. Installing the new wheel bearings. Now that was a whole story altogether. Uh, there was uh, someone on the internet said that the trick is to heat it up, uh, make it hot enough that it expands, then you will be able to just slide it onto the axle shaft. So using the means we have available to us at the workshop, we placed the wheel bearings inside a plastic bag, inside a pot of boiling water but no matter how long we left it in there, it just wouldn't heat up enough. It just didn't want to slide on. So after a while, we decided to call it a day and uh, Lasse actually ended up taking these axles to work where he has a hydraulic press and uh, installing them there. So while Lasse has taken the axles and the wheel bearings to work to get those installed with the help of a hydraulic press, we're gonna take a look at the next step down the road today, lay out our frame, all the suspension links, all the assorted bushings to see where all that belongs and how all that is going to go back together. So here we go.
brings us to the end of this month's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. It's just kind of the nature of the way we're bringing this to you as a month to month update and not, you know, step by step. That we're always kind of in the middle of something when we make a video. So right now, we're kind of in the middle of getting the suspension installed. Um, we couldn't quite make it uh, all the way to the end. You saw us deliver the engine to our new workshop. You saw us install the wheel bearings. That was uh, quite difficult and Lasse actually had to take that to his workshop. Uh, to get some help from a hydraulic press. That was something we just weren't able to do with the, the means that we have here. You saw us install brand new polyurethane rubber bushings. Uh, that kind of worked out. And uh, then finally put our suspension links, install those on the axles. We now have our axles in place. They're not finally mounted yet. We're in the middle of that. We will be able to show that to you next episode where we will then connect the suspension back to our frame, get the brake, com brake parts, uh, brake components set up, uh, get the brake system running again. We're still waiting on some parts, so kind of caused a little bit of a delay. But all that is to come. Hopefully then finally uh, put some wheels on this thing, make this back, turn this back into a rolling chassis. Uh, we'll show all of that hopefully to you in our next episode on June 1st, so stay tuned for that. Thank you guys so much for watching. Leave a like, leave a comment down below, and we will see you for the next video. Thank you.